So here's the fun. Here it actually begins. We're going to set up Zookeeper in a quorum mode. So it's going to be a multi-server deployment, and we're going to discuss configuration and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So before we get started and set up Zookeeper, let's try to understand what is Zookeeper. So Zookeeper is a pillar for so many distributed application because it provides features that are awesome. The first one is distributed configuration management. So it can manage the configuration of distributed systems. It can also provide election and provide consensus. That means if if many servers ask, hey, who is who's who's the leader? Who's the chef? And Zookeeper says you are. And that's it. you think that'd be easy, but it's really tough. So Zookeeper does this really well. It also does coordination in locks. That's more low level, but it's good to know. And finally, in Kafka's in Kafka's you know uh, case, it does key value store, so it can store many configuration for topics for brokers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to see this when we do a deep dive. So, not just Kafka, but Zookeeper is used by Hadoop and other big data systems. It's an Apache project that's stellar. It's very stable. And it hasn't had any major release in many years because it's so stable. So if you're wondering, hey, what kind of version of Zookeeper are we going to use? The branch 3.4 has been stable for years and years, and that's the one we're going to use. You can say, hey, there's 3.5 as well. Should we use it? And 3.5 is about to be awesome. It has many new features that I can't wait to use, but it's not ready yet. It's been in development for many, many years and it's still in beta. So I do not recommend for you to use 3.5 Zookeeper at all, okay? Kafka is not ready for it, and I'm not ready for it, and you're not ready for it, okay? So again, for this tutorial, we're going to use Zookeeper 3.4, and that's gonna work out just fine. Now let's just look at what Zookeeper is. So we all know what file system look like. There is the slash right here, and that means root. That's the root of your file system, like in Linux. And then we could have folders, in file systems. And in Zookeeper, you can also have that same concept where you, where your root has a node, and we'll call that node app. It could be whatever, but we'll just call it app. And again, if that app is a directory, well, we can have multiple subdirectories or files. We can have slash app slash finance or slash app slash sales. Okay, so Zookeeper is really like a file system. Okay, there are a few differences, but it looks like one. And each of these things is a node. Okay, so let's just talk about terminology a little bit. It has an internal st structure like a tree. You see like on the left, that's called a tree. We have the roots at the very top, and then you have branches, and at the very bottom you have leaves or nodes. So each node is called a Z node. And why Z? Well, because Zookeeper with a Z. So each node is called a Z node. Each node has a path. So in the blue boxes, for example, in the middle one, the path is slash app. And in bottom, it's slash app slash finance. Okay, so each Z node has a path. Each Z node can be persistent or ephemeral. So what's the difference? A persistent Z node is something that'll stay alive all the time. It's it's set in stone. Zookeeper will remember it all the time. An ephemeral Z node is a Z node that will just go away if your app disconnects. So each of them have advantages, okay, and Kafka uses both. Not for you to worry about, but it's good to know that both exist. Each Z node can store multiple Z nodes or it can store also data. And then finally, you cannot rename Z node. It's impossible. Okay, you could copy some, but you cannot rename them. Finally, and that's super awesome, and that's one of the best features of Zookeeper. Zookeeper can clients can watch Z nodes. And when you watch a Z node, you watch one for changes. So say my app finance changes, I can watch it. And when it changes, Zookeeper will let me know, hey, hey, it has changed, you should check it out. And I can get the updated value. And that's awesome. So Zookeeper is very light in features. It's a very, very minimal project, but what it does, it does really, really well. So that's a high level of, uh, overview of Zookeeper. Kafka uses all the features that are described, okay? Not for you to worry about, but it's really good of you to know about these things, okay? So hopefully you have a better understanding of what Zookeeper is. We'll get to play with Zookeeper in the next lectures, but hopefully that these two slides really help you out. All right, see you in the next lecture.